This is Nina Curley here chatting with Elias Ghanem, the Managing Director for the Middle East and North Africa at PayPal, about the PayPal Insights on e-commerce report that you just released today. Elias, how are you? Let me see if I can show you that on the screen. Here I am. We, we have the PayPal Insights report for the first time ever. And I think even more exciting than having it in English, now we also have it in Arabic. What were the biggest surprises? So I think two. The, the, the interesting one is building up to become 15 billion by 2015. 9 billion in 2012, 15 billion in 2015. But now the most exciting data really is M commerce using this one to do a transaction. We were able to quantify it to be 0.5 billion in 2012, so 0.5 out of 9. That will jump to 3 billion by 2015. So 3 billion out of uh, the 15 billion, this is 20%. And that's a little bit more, uh, it's smaller than the PayPal global projection, because in PayPal we have a projection that by 2015, 50% of our own volume will be on mobile. Here, as we don't capture 100% of the market, I'd be saying that 20% of the commerce will come through a mobile with and without PayPal is a very interesting data. The report also shows that the most lucrative e-commerce segment is travel, um, with, uh, with customers on average spending per year more than in any other segment, including fashion, electronics. Um, and the report also shows that customers spend the most on Qatar Airways. Can you speak to what Qatar Airways has done to earn that top slot? I think what Qatar Airways has is they have the right strategy, the right e-commerce strategy. And from what I can see is they have it across multi-channels. They have it across their website. They have it about across also their on a mobile solution. And of course, their price and their service is definitely part of the equation, I have no doubt. I suppose it's also worth mentioning that this, the survey only covers the UAE, Qatar, and Saudi. So of that market, Qatar Airways is at the top. Um, the survey also mentions that when it comes to online retail, 52% of shoppers in the UAE say that they shop on souk.com, and it's basically the most uh, popular online retailer in the region. Again, is there anything specific that Souk has done to be the online retailer to beat, aside from having launched you know, seven years ago and built up their brand for a while now? So in fact, what the report shows is 90% of the shopping is outside. Within the remaining 10%, this is where the local players comes in. In this 10%, we are starting to see brands, local brands that you and I know, that are starting to build their presence. So came out as the, the most preferred one in, uh, in the UAE uh, and others in, across the region. Why? Because again, they are doing what the customer is looking for. The customer is looking for variety, is looking for service, and he's looking for several payment options. Now, I do believe that every merchant here still have opportunities to improve on everything, but clearly, Consumers are finding what they are looking for on companies like Souk, like Soukar, like Kogon, like Marka VIP, which are or Namshi, which are the key players in the region. And if those key players want to boost their engagement on mobile, uh, the report also offers a few suggestions for that. Can you speak to those? What should those guys be doing? Yes, I think these guys and every guy should be heavily investing on mobile. Studies have shown that the more you uh, add typing at the checkout, the tougher it will be the conversion rate, the lower will be the conversion rate, which makes sense. So if I have to enter 16 digits, if I have to enter an expiry date, if I have to enter a first name, last name, if I have to enter an address, all this information is what you will be required to enter as a credit card holder, well, that's a lot of typing before the checkout. One, you have to have the mobile solution, and second, you have to have the right payment options that simplify all this typing by as little as possible. Um, another question, cash on delivery. 
This report definitively confirmed that cash on delivery is requested on 80% of purchases right now. Well, purchases made in the UAE, Saudi, and Qatar of those polled. Um, what are the alternatives to cash on delivery? What alternatives do you see and what trends do you see over the next few years? The results have shown that 80% of the e-commerce in 2012 is on cash on delivery, 15 is on cards, 5 is on PayPal. The projection shows that by 2015, we will be 60% on cash on delivery, the remaining being between PayPal and the credit cards. So that's 40% split between cards 25 and us 15. What is the main problem? Why cash on delivery is so big today? For a simple reason, there is a lack of trust. As I don't trust the merchant that will send me the goods, I prefer to deliver the goods to my house and on the spot I make a call of buying or not buying. So I can always choose if the size is not the right one, if the color is not the right one, or if the guy does not show up, I'm not liable. So the solution is really to solve the trust issue from the beginning. How do we solve it? By giving, by for the merchant to offer payment options that has the protection embedded into their uh, their payment solution. I do believe that the merchants are the one who has to make the biggest efforts by either removing it, cash on delivery, or I'd rather say never offering it from the beginning, or if you offer it, de-incentivize the people to use it, either by making it more expensive, which is never easy, or by making the other option more convenient, more motivating to use it by giving whatever gift you want to gift around that. Well, thank you so much for sharing the results of the report and uh, readers can download it in English and Arabic on WAMDA. And uh, thank you so much for chatting with us. Shukran.